Hey guys, it's me. I'm gonna be whispering kind of because I got a very sick girl. I have missed you guys so much. Um, my husband last night, we were out um, on the porch having a drink while Hannah was in the pool and he said, when are you gonna get around to doing another video? <laughs> I said, I know I've missed the videos too. So, hi, I've missed you guys. It is the end of July. I think I've been, um, floating my butt in my pool for most of July. <laughs> I've enjoyed it though. So I am back to do a video with you guys today because I have missed crafting. Um, I've missed doing videos. I've missed it all. It's been a very relaxing summer. Um, as you can see, I'm a little, little tan. <laughs> a little tanned up. Um, got some scars on my hands that tanned up too. Um, so I started playing around this morning um, making bags out of parchment paper from the Dollar Tree. Um, these glassine bags that I've been seeing everybody put like um, in their um, happy mail and you know they'll put them in journals or whatever and I can never seem to find them. So I was like you know what I'm gonna make my own because that's just how I roll. So you can make them. I love the crinkly, the crinkly sound of the paper. Um, you can make them any size you want. You can do different like cuts on them. See how this one is like a scalloped punch edge. This one I used the um, envelope punch board. I'm going to show you how to make all these little cuts too. Um, I used the envelope, envelope punch board on this one. Um, these are all kind of the same. And then this one I thought it was so cool. So what I did is I took a piece of parchment paper and I um, I modge podged on this napkin. Isn't it so pretty? So I had these napkins over here that I was working with last week. And all you do is just tear off the very last layer of the napkin because there's actually like I don't know two or three layers in a napkin. Believe it or not, they're so thin that you wouldn't know. And now that I've got you on camera, I'm not going to be able to do it. Okay, so there's one layer, okay? But there's still another layer attached there. <clears throat> so you just got to peel them apart until you get to the very thinnest layer right there, yeah. Okay, so this is the part that you're going to use, the part with the print on it. And you're just going to, they'll just tear apart real easy. And so you just take a piece of parchment paper Put this on top of it and really go to town with the Mod Podge and then once it's Mod Podge down make sure you put a nice layer of Mod Podge over it <clears throat> and then when they're all nice and dry you can make these cute little envelopes with them. Are these not adorable? These don't have the same crinkly effect because it's got the Mod Podge on it but how cute are these? Um, you can put die cuts in them, you can put stickers, you can send them in happy mail, you can give, um, you know, say you have a gift card that you want to give to somebody but you don't just want to hand them a gift card, go ahead and put it in here, put a little tag on here that says happy birthday. Um, so I made two of those, super cute. I love them. And then here's another glassine bag. And then I went ahead and took some um, paper, uh, craft paper and I made these little ones here. Same thing with this. If you wanted to throw like a gift card in here or something, um, put a little happy birthday or just for you or thinking of you or get well soon, whatever you wanna do and um, give this to somebody. And they're so simple to make because you don't even really have to measure. You know what I mean? Like, if you're using a gift card, then obviously you're gonna have to measure the size of the card to be able to fit it in there. But um, let me see real quick. I've got my wallet right here. Let me see if this is, i take out my library card, for example. That is perfect. Look at that. A gift card would fit perfectly in there, and this is a six by six piece of paper, okay? So that would be perfect. Same thing here. This is a six by six and all I did was do a scalloped punch on the top of it here. 
with some decorative scissors. How cute is that? You can even punch a hole and put some ribbon through it. Tie it up like that with a little note that says, you know, just for you or, or happy birthday or hope you get well soon. So these are really cute. So I'm going to make one of um, the glassine bags here on, on camera. I don't have any more of this material, so I'm not going to be able to make one of these. But it's the same thing. Like I said, you just take the um, napkin Mod Podge it on wax. Um, not wax paper, I'm sorry. I hope I've been saying parchment paper. It's not wax paper, it's parchment paper. And I got it from the Dollar Tree. Okay. And um, it comes 8.33 yards by 12 inches, and that'll make you a lot of bags. Um, they're super quick and easy. Like I said, you don't really have to measure. If you want to measure, that's fine too. But um, look at that, that's so cute. If you wanted to put like a little tag here, isn't that adorable? And then um, I'll show you how I do these different punches too. So let me start with these paper ones. Let me put all my other stuff. Let me put my other stuff away. Um, my favorite glue to use is this uh, mono liquid glue. This is the glue that I use, my wet glue that I use for all of my crafting projects. I just really like it. Um, I also think that you can use Aileen's Tacky Glue. Don't quote me on that though, because with the parchment paper, I guess it doesn't have a real slick finish, so you should be able to. But this is my just all-time favorite glue because it dries so quick. And see, it dries um, clear. So you can barely even see where I've glued those together. So um, you can experiment with glues, but like I said, me personally, I'm just gonna use the Tombow. Um, it's good to have a bone folder. This is so old and beat up. This is one of my very first bone folders ever. And um, then just parchment paper or whatever kind of paper you want to do. You could do this with like old book pages. That would be really cute too. Or even, you know, I wonder if you could do it with newspaper. That would be pretty cool to get a piece of newspaper and cut it out and do this. That would be really cute, I think, to do for like junk journals and stuff. All right, so let me... Um, let me just use a piece of paper to begin with. Let's put these to the side. So I've got a piece of six by six here. Um, this would be great to use all your six by six pads too if you have them. I know I have tons of six by six pads. So um, go through your six by six pads of paper and see, hey, what do I wanna make You know, bags with? So anyway, we're just gonna take this you're literally gonna fold over. You don't have to measure. Like I said, this is not like a measuring thing. I don't like measuring, I hate measuring. I don't do good with numbers. And then the only thing that you're gonna wanna make sure is, first of all, if you have a directional print, you wanna make sure that your direction is right. So this is words. And so I wanna make sure that the front of the envelope's like that. So you want to go over by I would say like half an inch. So see here, you wanna make sure you are going over about a half an inch, overlapping right here, cause this is where we're gonna put the glue. So you wanna make sure that you're overlapping right there, okay? Yeah, it's about a half an inch. So this ends right here, go over about a half an inch. And then really work it down with your bone folder to make sure you have a nice crisp, there. Okay. The only thing with this thicker paper is that I did notice that sometimes it'll crack along the edges here. Um, this seems to be doing okay, but just be gentle with it if it's, you know, a thicker paper that's going to crack. So for this next part, you're going to take the bottom, make sure directional again, this is the bottom, and you're just going to fold it up as much as you want it to come up, okay? And I'm not going to use the bone folder because I don't want to um, break my paper. I don't wanna break the fibers right there, see? If I were to mash this down, there's so many layers, okay, that I would break the fiber. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna give myself a guide if we're uncutting. 
okay? So go ahead and open this up. I don't know if you're gonna be able to, I mean, I'm sure you can see the creases. So what we're looking to do is to take off some of this bulk. See how bulky this is? So we're going to cut this part off right here and just leave this flap to fold up, okay? So this right here, if you wanna, you can even take a, a, a pen or a pencil and just write X right here because this is the flaps that we're cutting off. And then when you open it up, you can see where your X's are, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just take a pair of scissors and I like to use this white side because I can see the crease better. But see, here's my X. I'm just gonna snip my X off. So we're just gonna go just straight on the creases just like that, okay? Here's my other X, so we wanna take off this whole thing. So I'm just gonna follow the lines, my creases that I made. And I'm gonna fold it in so I can get a better crease so I can see where I'm cutting. I have my glasses on, but that doesn't really matter now, does it? And this doesn't have to be exact. This is just, it's not gonna, it's gonna be covered up. So it doesn't have to be exact, okay? There we go. So there's my two pieces that I X'd out, okay? Those are garbage. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is take a little triangle off each side here. So you're just gonna go in and take a little triangle off of each side so it's not so bulky. We just want when everything folds, we want it to fold really crisp and nice. We don't want any, um, any paper like having to fold through two pieces or anything. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fold it and then I'll apply the glue and fold it, okay? So we're going to, it really doesn't matter which way you do this, see? It's just whatever way you prefer. So I prefer the bigger piece underneath. So you're gonna lay the bigger piece down, the other piece, and then this is gonna fold up like this. And I did notice it still does split a little bit right here. See where the paper fibers are splitting apart? That's fine, it's not a big deal. Um, just be gentle with it. So now we're going to apply our glue. So this is the flap that I'm gluing over. I'm simply gonna run a line of glue down the very edge, because I don't want it to get to the inside pocket, and glue my envelope together by accident. So just right down the very edge there, and then we'll just seal it down. And this glue, like I said, it dries really quick and you don't need a lot of it. You literally need just a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. So I'm just gonna put my bone folder in here and kind of seal down that edge a little bit more to make sure that it's not spilling out underneath there. Okay. And again, just take your bone folder, make sure that nothing's glued together, everything's nice and open. Okay. And then all we're doing is taking this bottom flap here, just a tad bit of glue. Just a tad bit of glue will do. Hold it down. Sometimes take this and just kind of give it, give it a push right there to make sure everything holds down. So while I'm making my glassine bag, I'll kind of tell you what I've been up to lately. Um, I've just had like a real chill summer. I um, I mean it's been busy. Don't get me wrong, but I've tried not to do any kind of working, or I've really just tried to be like in the moment with the kids because you know Selena's 17 and she's 
like I said, she's having a hard time figuring out, you know, like, where does she fit in, and, you know, does she, can she hold down a job, um, you know, what is she going to do after she gets out of high school, so I'm really just focusing on, like, spending time with the kids and, you know, being a mom. So anyway, um, again, make sure that you're all free of any kind of glue in there, and it's nice and open. And then you've got your little coin envelope here. It is so freaking cute. Now you just want to decide what kind of notch you want to put up here. So a couple ideas. You can get um, scissors with a decorative edge. I have probably like there's like 12 or 13 of these. I got them in a pack at um, Michael's. I used a 50% off coupon code one time and they come in a pack and they are all different. All see all the different edges. Okay and so there's like you know 12, 13, 14 of them. I don't know. Um, but you could definitely just take one of these and just snip the top. Um, let's see, what are we going to do with this? We'll just go across here. Is this the one I want to use? Yeah, we'll just go across here. Okay. Yeah, this is a nice cut. I like this one. Go across here. You're cutting two sheets of paper, so just be gentle and realize where your cuts are. Okay. And then... You can go and do, you want to cut out maybe a side here to give it a little dimension. You can do that. And if you want it to measure up, you just take the cut off, put it to the other side, and that way you make sure that you're getting like the same measurement here. So that's kind of cute. And again, if you want to just punch a hole in it, um, with a hole punch, maybe tie it with some twine or something. Like I said, put a gift card in there, put a little note in there. Um, what else could we put in here? Put a tea bag. Put a little tea bag in here. Um, maybe with like an iTunes gift card if somebody's sick. And then, you know, just write a little note. You know, um, buy yourself a nice game or watch a movie on iTunes on me. And here's a tea bag. I hope you feel better or something like that. Um, die cuts. This is definitely a good idea for sending die cuts. So this is the little box that I keep my die cuts in. Um, I store them by um, collection. Some people store them by color, whatever. Everybody has their own storing. That's like a different topic for a different day. So um, say you wanted to share some of these die cuts with, you know, a friend. Take these. Put them in there. Ooh, is that going to fit? Yes, it is. It's going to fit perfectly. And throw some more in here. Slip it in some happy mail. Stick it in a card. Um, whatever you want to do with them. So, yeah, this is perfect, actually, for die cuts. Look at that. They fit in there perfectly. So anyway, um, don't be surprised if you guys get happy mail from me and you see these little envelopes with a whole bunch of stuff in them because they're my new obsession. I like making them. Okay, so there's that idea. And then let's go ahead and move on to the parchment paper. Cute. All right, let's move on to the parchment paper. I will tell you that the parchment paper, mm, it's kind of hard to cut with these. So I personally would not do that. Um, <clears throat> I know one of the girls that I watched a video on, she was using um, wax paper and she couldn't get a punch through the wax paper. It just didn't punch properly. But I haven't had a problem punching my parchment paper. So um, that's what I've been using for my parchment paper. All right, so next. You're going to get you a piece of your par parchment paper. Again, you do not have to measure any of this, y'all. You just, you don't have to measure. If you have something specific you want to put in it, yeah, go ahead and measure it. But other than that, you don't have to measure. 
you do have to make sure that your lines are straight. But um, other than that, I use um, a paper trimmer because I like to make sure that my lines are nice and straight. So when I glue it down, it doesn't look wonky. I think wonky is one of my favorite words. Let's make a bigger one because I don't have any bigger envelopes. Let's make a bigger one. I have a couple small ones and then a couple medium sized ones. Like this is, I would say, a medium sized one. Let's make a bigger one now. Um, say you just that you know, build a whole batch of cookies and you want to share them with your neighbors. This is such a super cute way to individually bag cookies. Or if you just want to, um, you know, put a few treats in a bag um, to give to somebody, this is a cute way to do it. So you'll see me fold and do basically the same things that I did on the paper one. Um, but I'm just going to chit chat while I do this one. Ooh. Sorry, I moved the camera. So, anyway, um, let's see, what have I been up to? Um, I've been in the pool a lot with the kids. We've been really enjoying the pool. I'll have to take a picture and insert a picture. I'll insert a picture right here of the pool. was bought off Amazon. Um, it was $999, which that might sound like a lot, but it has like a real sand filter. It doesn't have any of those cartridge filters. That's what our last pools have had is cartridge filters, and they are a pain in the booty. So I did not want a cartridge filter in the pump. So it has a sand filter where you actually use the um, pump sand and it has been amazing. Like we have been in love with the pool and we plan on keeping it up, you know, for years to come and building a deck around it. So when you talk about a thousand dollar investment for a pool, that's not really that bad, especially if you're getting, you know, a really good quality item. So we have been loving our pool. Um, Gabrielle was just in town, my oldest. She was just in town last week and the week before that for a couple days. And um, she was here for about a week. And I miss her like crazy. So she came down with her husband and I love both of them. Both of them are like so fun to be around. And um, she brought her two rescue dogs. So Carmen and Babe are my grand dogs, and um, I told her she is a very special person because let me tell you something, those dogs, they were abused and they are very quirky. They're very like odd dogs, um, they would, they're very skittish, like they would you know, bark and jump every time my husband walked in the door. Well, my husband stands like five foot six. You know, he's a little guy, so it's not that he's like this big burly guy or anything. Um, he's a little guy, but obviously they've been abused by males. Um, they bonded pretty good with me and Hannah and Selena. Um, as long as you don't like make any sudden movements, they were fine. But... Um, yeah, all I gotta say is she's a very special person for taking on, I call them broken animals, and she's a very special person for doing that because there's just not a lot of people that have the patience to deal with broken animals like that. And you could tell, like, Babe is a, um, boxer mix, she's like boxer hound. And like you can tell the pads of her feet, like her little pads of her paws were, it's like baby skin. So she must have been burned. Uh, I'm sure 
that she wasn't burned intentionally. I'm sure they left her out on hot concrete or something, you know. Um, so, you know, and like she's got like um, cuts in her ears where you can see where the ear's been torn. So I don't know what happened there. But you can just tell like these dogs have really been through the ringer. The only different thing I'm going to do here is you notice that I glued it down the center. And now I'm just gonna kind of take off this. And the reason that I'm not so particular about taking off the edges with the parchment paper is because it's not thick. So you don't have to worry about it. So with this, I'm just gonna go ahead and take just straight across here. You don't want it to look like raggedy or anything because you're gonna be able to see it. But see. Um, so anyway, the dogs are just, they're real, real jumpy, real skittish. They're very finicky and about, you know, they're peeing and pooing because they were in the shelter for so long and they were probably abused and neglected before they got to the shelter and so on and so forth. So I just, um, I love the dogs and I just really think Gabrielle and Jesse are really amazing people for doing that. Um, it has not been easy for her she has really struggled with these dogs because she didn't know anything about skittish dogs. I mean, the only dog we've had was Cammy, and she was, you know, a big love bug. So um, Gabrielle really had to research about, you know, what to do with them as far as like their pee and poo schedule and leaving them alone in the house and how to approach, have, having strangers approach them and things like that. Um, so it was just really a lot of fun to have Gabrielle and Jesse here when we played games and we went in the pool and we went to the aquarium and it was just a lot of fun to have them around. Um, so now that they're gone, I think life will start getting back to normal again. Um, well, what's normal, <laughs> you know? All right, so I'm gonna show you how I made this little, um, let me find one of the other ones, how I made this little indent like that with my envelope punch board. Oh, you can't really see it. There you go. So what I do is I take my bag. See, I've got a nice big bag here. And I'm going to measure how wide it is approximately. One, two, three, four, five. It's approximately five and a half inches long. So half of five and a half is going to be two and a half, two and three fourths. So two and three fourths is half of the bag. So I'm going to measure right here, two and three fourths, because I want this notch to be in the center-ish. So you just put it in there. It's not going to do it very well. Um, this is fine. As long as it gives me like the idea of where it's supposed to be, I can deal with that. So I just go in and finish off the area that it didn't cut. It actually cut a lot better last time than this time. See, it's kind of raggedy. So I don't know if it's just because these were smaller um, and it didn't have so much give to it, but this is fine. I can deal with this. And like I said, there's always different ways to decorate the edges, or you could just leave it plain. It's not like leaving it plain stayed across is ugly. It's not, because that gives you the ability to fold it down or whatever. So it's a little um, it's a little rusty, a little raggedy, but that's okay. So this is what we've got here. Got a little notch there. And here's our bag. So, um, for the bigger bags, these would be perfect for cards. If you wanted to make a card that fit into here, you could, um, I wonder if this is like an A5 size, or an A, oh, I don't even know what size it is, like a standard half of a eight and a half by 11. I don't know what size that is. I'm not gonna look it up. But you can even slip a card in here. How cute is that? If you wanted to put a card in here and then again, you know, say you punch two holes here and tie them, or I don't know, just be creative. And again, take your bone folder, make sure that everything is nice and opened in there, that you didn't glue anything. See, it's nice wide and open. Okay, 
and this would be perfect for a full-size journal if you wanted to have a tuck spot right here. Glue the back of it down and here's a full-size journal. Here's another thing I wanted to try out. I haven't tried this yet, so I figured I'd try it on camera with you. This is a Maggie Holmes stamp set that I got from Tuesday Mornings. And it's just got the little ballerina, the unicorn, the hello love, and the bow. So I think we're going to do... I'm going to use my Memento ink because I know that it dries fast. And um, like I said, I've never done this before, so I kind of want to see how this is going to work. Um, what if we just did like hello love with a bow right there that would be cute let's see if we can do that so we're gonna put the hello love on here okay I'm gonna put the wreath around it and then I'm gonna stamp this Okay, and then I'll put the bow on there when I'm done with this. Like I said, I haven't done this yet, so I don't even know if it's gonna work. I just thought it would look pretty. So what have you guys been up to this summer? Tell me some fun things that you've been doing. Have you spent time with family? Um, have you gone on vacation? Vacation is next for me. I just booked my plane tickets to Florida um, right before I got on to do this video. Um, so we're going to Florida to see my dad and spend time with him. Just me and the girls. William's got to work. Um, and then our big family vacation, me and my husband and the kids, we're going to Great Wolf Lodge for a week in September. I'm like, super excited about that. Alright, let's see how this is going to do. Um, so like the second week of September, we, um, we're going to the Poconos to Great Wolf Lodge. It's going to be super fun. We had so much fun last time we went to Great Wolf. Um, the kids love it. They have plenty of things to do. We love it. We had plenty of things to do. Oh, that's cute. That's really cute. It's a very light effect. Hmm. Let me see if I can put the um, bow on there. So that's coming up the second week of September. So yeah, we've just been kind of hanging out at the house. But um, definitely tell me, oh, look at that. I wonder gonna smear. I'm gonna let it dry for a minute before I touch it because it's looking like it didn't come off of the stamp. You know what I mean? Oh, am I putting it on the wrong side? No. Alright. I don't have any napkins over here so I'm gonna use one of my decorative napkins. And some water. <laughs> um... So tell me about any vacations you guys have taken. Where are you going? What are you guys doing? Um, are you staying at home? Are you going somewhere? Is family coming to visit you? Are you going to visit family? What do y'all summers look like? I've been trying to keep Hannah pretty on track with her homeschool just because I don't want her to be so overloaded this year. Um, but of course I had a whole week full of stuff for her to do this week and She's sick. Speaking of, she's been sleeping for quite a while. I think she's going on two hours of sleeping right now. That makes me nervous when they sleep so much. Does it make you guys nervous when your kids sleep a lot? Maybe I should add on to that. Hannah's not a sleeper. <laughs> Hannah's never been a sleeper. Um, so for her to be sleeping during the day, that's like a big deal. And that's what makes me nervous. Like she stopped napping when she was one, you guys. <laughs> She totally stopped taking naps. So, oh, my older daughter's home. Hold on one minute. All right, I'm back. My middle daughter um, just got home from uh, 
a job program. Anyway, Hannah's awake now, so I don't have to whisper. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like it's not really taking on the parchment paper because there's so much left over on the stamp. Maybe it is taking, I don't know. I just know I'm getting it all over my fingers. All right, so I'm gonna use my pinky that doesn't have any ink. Oh man, that stinks. I wonder if I just let it sit, if it'll still smear. So just FYI, I came back here to my desk like two hours later and it doesn't smear. So it did work. Mm -hmm. Why are you bringing them out here? Selena's bringing her hermit crabs out here. She wants to show you her hermit crabs. Why don't you turn off that fan so they don't dry out? Hannah, hit it. There you go. She'll show you guys her hermit crabs. I'm not in love with them, but I think that I can see where she thinks that they're cute. So this is just a bowl. She doesn't keep them in here. She has a very nice enclosure for them. She's got a big 10-gallon tank with tons of, like, um... Eco Earth well, for them to climb in. Water. That's probably why they're not coming out. Well, plus I'm sitting here talking <sighs> to you. It's SpongeBob and Squidward. SpongeBob and Squidward. Anyway, her tank is beautiful. And this is just like which, a. We don't know which one is SpongeBob. Yeah, I know. Look, they got in the same exact shell. They decided to get an identical shell. She yeah. used to be able to tell them they're apart. Mad. Yeah. She used to be able to tell them apart, and now she can't tell them apart. Oh, and don't worry, all you. Hermit crab blowers, if there's any, that is fresh water. We use dechlorinator. Salt water. It's salt, salt water, actually. She oh. uses salt water and fresh water, so they can get both. But anyway, we use dechlorinator. And we found out that they're not nocturnal, so they... They are nocturnal. Hi, oh, puppies. He wants to come out. Hi, puppies. Good one. Can they climb underwater like that? Yeah, they have gills. Oh. Hi, baby. Here he comes out to say hi. So they're not really my cup of tea, but I can see where she thinks that they're adorable. That one's SpongeBob. Is it? He looks like he's grown a lot in the last week. Has he? I think yeah. so. Yeah, he's grown a lot since we got Those him. Those are called purple pinchers. I'm not touching them, but... Purple pincher from the crowd. He just needs some... Come on, come out. Hi, baby. See, they respond to her. Isn't that so funny? He's smaller. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure that one's Squidward. I think that's SpongeBob growing. We're not really supposed to take them out, but they love the water. They have two little bowls in their thing, but it's not, like, big, so they can't walk around in it. It's only, like, this deep. They're just little bathing things, so that's why she gives them um, a couple minutes in this thing. They love it. They would probably like to spend I honestly hours think in that, that this one's SpongeBob. Oh, Oops, sorry. You scared him. This one's Squidward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, SpongeBob's much bigger, I think. Mm -hmm. He wasn't that big when we got him, though. Mm -hmm. SpongeBob didn't molt. I think he just grew. You can't. They have to, molt. yeah. They have to molt to grow. So here, he probably already ate his exo exoskeleton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boy. He's gotten really big since we got him, cause he was this this guy's size. Mm -hmm. They were both this size, so he must have already molted. And they want they have one big claw and one like little claw. You see that, Mama? Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, cat and dog person, and Selena's a hermit crab person. Okay, well, I'm not a hermit crab person. I just want to save them because where they were was not okay. I'm a guinea pig and hermit crab person with Selena's help. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'll just let you watch them while I say goodbye. Um... Thanks for showing up and watching today's video. I know it's been a long time since I've seen you guys. 
Um, I don't know when my next video is going to be because I don't know when I'm going to get back into normal routine. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Try to make some of these glassine bags. I don't want to ruffle the bags and make too much noise. I don't want to scare them. Um, you can't escape. I know. Unless you crawl on the other one. Oh my so, god, yeah. They... Yeah, they climb on each other. How about that? We but thought we thought, thought that we're mating. mating. Yeah, they're not though. But they're not. They're just trying to feel them up or not feel them up, but like <laughs> they're trying to feel each other because that's how they like get to know each other and then even then they have eyes. <laughs> yeah. And they also are um that's why she got two of them because they are they um, won't survive. They like to what is it called? They're like pack animals. They like oh, yeah. to have more than one together. I don't, I don't think it's called a pack. Hey. I wonder if they pinch each other. Do they pinch each other? Um, that's only when they get into fights. Oh, okay. They not... sure did pinch me, though. Yeah. Little buggers. Yeah, she got pinched by one of them. I think it was his, their small claw, though, because it didn't, like, hurt really bad. Yeah. Why are you guys following each other? I know. Oh, no, do not climb on him. I know you're yep. thinking of it. Mm-hmm. All right, so subscribe to Chaotic Mom. Okay. Make sure you hit the bell for <laughs> notifications. And I don't know if anybody, look, at they're trying to get on each other. Look at it. I don't know if anybody needs to okay. know, yep. nope. but subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications is completely free. I know that some people don't know that, so I am here to tell you it does not cost any money to subscribe to Chaotic Mom. It does not cost any money to get notifications from me whenever I post a video. And I will see you guys back in my next video. I hope that you guys are loving this summer. I hope that you guys are spending time with the people that you love. And I will see you next time. Bye. He's trying to get away from him. Because he keeps climbing on him. Yeah. Bye. We're like real brothers and sisters.